Rosie. Morning. Don't know all the icons at the top. Karen. <laughs> Morning, Karen. Morning, Rosie. Who else have I got there? Say hello, and then I can I can see who you are. I can see the icons at the top, but I don't know all the all your little pictures. Got five now. Mum's here now. Morning, Mum. Who else? Hi, darling. <laughs> Sharon. Morning, Sharon. Nice, bright, sunny morning in Aylesbury. As usual, I've had to board the windows up. <laughs> There's too much light in here. But um, I will turn the camera down so it won't be so bright in a minute. So, But um, while everyone's coming on, always just say hello to everyone. And um, before we get started. So I hope you've all, all had a good week this week and you've all been getting on with your morning. Pat and Leslie as well. Morning. Morning, Auntie Pat. Morning, Leslie. Morning, Karen. My lovely cousins from where? In Hertfordshire. <laughs> Sue. Morning, Sue. My lovely neighbour. Who else have we got? Say hello so we can say hello back. Chris. Morning, Chris. Morning, Jill. Looking forward to the demo. Good. What we like to hear. Hello, it's a bit glary, isn't it? I'm going to um I'm going to turn the camera down so you can see what I'm doing, not my face today. <laughs> That's probably better anyway. Morning Carol. Morning. Just say morning to everyone. So today we're going to be doing a parallel arrangement which is similar. Um, it's like a bigger version, if you like, of an Ikebana, which Ikebana is um, a Japanese art of flower arranging, um, which dates back to the eight, 800 AD, I believe, um, when they used to take um, arrangements to the altar. Morning Sue, morning Eve, is it Eve? Yeah, morning Eve, morning Sue. Uh, yeah, so we're going to be doing a, a parallel arrangement, uh, but it's we kind of start off as an ikibana. It's just it's a simple arrangement, just done. Morning Yvette, just done in a block of oasis, um, in a tray. I mean, you, if you was given this as a gift, you could do it on a nice plate or a nice dish at the bottom, a nice glass. Tray. A plate would be nice. Yvette, morning, morning Eve, morning Julia. Um, but it's you know obviously for this purpose I'm just showing you how to do it. So I'm just doing it in a in a plastic dish um, with a block of oasis. Um, but as I say, you can do this really nice, really um, really pretty arrangement. Um, you could do it in a really nice dish if you're giving it away to somebody. But I'm just showing you the principle today. Um, so we're just going to be doing it in a, in a plastic in a plastic tray which we use hundreds of in floristry and a block of um, wet oasis. So that's what we're starting off with. Um, so yes, so um, Ikebana basically was Japanese art of flower arranging um, and they used to do them as far back as 800 AD uh, when they used to give them as offerings to the altar for the gods. And um, then it turned, in later years, it turned into what they called Ikebana um, and they used to adorn their alcoves in their homes with them it was obviously because they have small houses um, so they're, they're where they can um, put nice things in their houses was very small so it was like a little alcove in their homes on their walls so they would make small arrangements to um, put um, on the, in their um, alcoves in their, their small homes morning Glenda um, so that's where Ikebana sort of came from and the parallel arrangement kind of came from that really I suppose um, and the a parallel arrangement really is all about um, it's all about proportion so basically you need to have Molly Maria you you need to have 75% of your, your material face in one direction that's basically what it is and 25% of it can be free form which is usually at the bottom morning Maria um, so it's all about proportion with um, parallel arrangements so the idea is just that you all all your flowers should be in one direction apart from your 25% which covers kind of covers the bottom morning Mandy so we're gonna start um, and who's that uh, is that Rosemary morning 
Um, so yes, so we're going to get started now. Okay, so the um, the greenery that I've got today, I've got some um, pittisporum from my garden. This is the dark one. I think it's called Negro or something like that. Might be Negro, Negro, might be uh, something like that. But it's pittisporum and it's the dark sort of purple leafed one. Put a bit aubergine. Um, and I've got, also got lots of big ivy leaves. Lots of big ivy leaves for the bottom. I've got two quarter line um, yucca, these are yucca leaves actually, with nice points on them, you want nice points to give the definition um, of your arrangement, and I've got a little bit of broom, um, which hasn't obviously come into flower yet, but that will be all full of um, lovely flowers in the spring, um, so that's beautiful as well. So not a lot, you don't need a lot for this arrangement, I've got a little bit of boxes as well, if I get stuck, I need to fill in, um, but as I said, it's all about... 30 uh, 75% of it is about being upright. Okay, right, so let's get started. Um, and on, all the only flowers that you need are two types of flowers and maybe a tiny small filler. So I'm using aqua roses, I've got five aqua roses, and I've got five pink tulips. So all you really need is 10 flowers and maybe a small stem of something just to fill in in the front if you want to. Morning, Beverly. Um, so that's it, really, that's all we need. So I'll crack on. Um, what I'm going to do as well on mine, I'm going to, just to make it look a bit rustic, I'm going to put a few sort of twigs. I did have this lovely big one which I was going to use, um, but I'm going to turn the camera down now so you can see what I'm doing. I was going to use this lovely big one on the front, but it's actually just trying to get it attached was a little bit difficult. So I'll leave that one for today, we'll do that another day. So I'm going to be, morning Rosemary, I'm going to be using some small sort of cutoffs. These are all from my log pile in front of my house, and we're going to put them along the front. All right. Now, first of all, we need to um, tape our oasis in. So we've got our pot tape, and we're just going to go around just to secure it into the dish. All right. So two, just two bits, it's fine. Go underneath, give it a good secure grounding. So we've just got our pot tape, all secure, not going to come out. Morning Barbara. So what we're going to do is we're going to just fix these to the front. So I'll try and do it from this side so you can see. And because I've got a bit sticking out of this one, I'm going to use that on the bottom because that will give me more anchorage. And also obviously what I need is some really uh, strong wires just to, just to anchor these in. So these are nice long wires and we're just going to anchor these in just to give it some strength. And just pinch it behind. So just two of these, so one wire cut into two, just to give it a bit of anchorage. Okay, just pinch it so that's not going anywhere. And then you can sort of stagger them how you want them. I want them to sort of be a little bit, let's see I've got another sticky bit here so I'm actually going to push that in to the oasis to give it a bit of stability as well. That's it. And again, one wire, cut in half. Morning, Ambery. And we're going to push that in just to give it again, just to give it a bit of anchorage. Just pinch it. If you pinch it behind, and the other half, and the other end. not going anywhere and then I've got a third one and we're going to use that I think what we might do is I might put it in here we're going to squeeze him in there that's it we'll squeeze him in there but I, I, I don't want um, sort of even edges so we'll put one in here Let's leave that one up a bit jam him in that's it probably don't need any wires on that one but I'm going to put one more morning Jennifer I can just about see your name at the angle Okay, well this one's coming away a little bit, but that's fine. Just push it in. So they're they're fairly sturdy. They're not going to they're not going anywhere. They're fairly sturdy, and they're on the front, so they're not taking any um, 
any um, any bearing weight sort of thing. Okay, so that's going to be the front. All right. So I'll just turn it around while I'm working on it. So now we're going to use our ivy leaves just to go around the bottom. Basically, all you what all you're wanting to do is just to cover your your dish. Just cut these nice diagonal cuts all the way around. And go in between your your leaves, your log little loggies at the front. So we're just going around the bottom at the moment. Morning, Wendy. Morning, Claire. So we're just putting a few more leaves in and around the edge. So it's sort of sort of front facing. So you're sort of seeing them from the front. So that's going to be this is going to be your front here. So you can see. And we'll just use a few more bigger ones. This is going to be at the back, so you're not really going to see this. So we'll just put a few, a few at the back. And you can put these a little bit higher up because you're you're not going to put anything here on the back really. So you can put these a little higher up so they sort of drape down and they're hiding they're hiding your, your plastic tray. You don't want to see your plastic tray. I mean also if you had a nice dish here you wouldn't you might not necessarily need to hide your dish. You might want to see your dish. Basically, you're just doing your corner. So you're just hiding, you're just hiding your dish from the back. So that's your back view. So you're just hiding it. You're hiding your plastic dish. Morning, Michelle. Does ivory leaves last? Like, ivy leaves. The ivy leaves. Yes, they last for ages. <laughs> they last for ages. So I use them. I love them. And I've got them all over my garden. So. <laughs> So yes, but you can get these from alleyways and gardens, parks. I mean, no one's going to moan, moan if you take a few ivy leaves. Um, but anyway, but don't take them from where you shouldn't really, I suppose. I shouldn't really say that, but <laughs> just be obviously mindful of where you're taking them, obviously. Right, so we've just done a, like a little skirt around the edge just to hide, hide the bottom. Okay, so that's, that's the back and this is the front here. So now we're going to do the outline of our arrangement and we're going to use our uh, cordial line. These are cordial, these are from my cordial line. I've got a big tree and I'm going to put these. I want these I want in about a, about a third. So to so make sure they're level at the top. You want them to be level at the top. So but you want them to be level at the top so what you're putting into a nice diagonal cut you can pinch it a little bit so that it goes in we want them we want them level you can see that they go in like that and you want them level at the top see so that's going to be your height your overall height So we're going to put, a, um, we're going to use our flowers first because it's easier to do the flowers first and get your proportions right first. So we're going to use our roses, and I tend to start from the from the back. I, I tend to start with with the height. So I'm going, I'm doing the highest one at the back. So I want this about two or three inches in from the top of the leaf. So just measure it. It's not going to be a lot cut off actually, and then put it in front and you kind of use your um, your borderline leaf as, as a bit of stability for it at the back. You can leave a few little leaves on the top if you wish. Otherwise sometimes I cut them off if they look a little if they detract from the overall view of the uh, arrangement. And the next one you want it to be just just to the right or left. I'm going to go left because um, I might do a bit more in the middle. Um, my left obviously. Um, and then that's so you just need to sort of gauge it how how much it's going to go in and then this one just just to the right of it 
right, sorry, just to the left of it. It's my left and right. My husband always says I think rubbish at left and right. So they are just to the left of it. And then the next one we're going to go in here, just to the right of it. Morning, Rosemary. It's saying request to join you in the demonstration. Oh, okay, is it? Okay, let me see. You shouldn't have to because you're part of the group, darling. I don't... I, you shouldn't have to request anything though because you're already in the group aren't you so you should be you're seeing it so you should be able to see it you don't have to do anything else rosemary you're watching it live anyway all right so we've got one here we've got one to the left we're going to do one to the right a little bit lower you just have to cut off what you think and then it's probably a little bit less each time and then this one's going down a little bit more about the same about the same depth in between each one. There we go, so that's the third one. Okay. And then we're going down a bit more again. Okay. And the thing is with this, you don't want to keep, if you, t if you take it out to re align it don't put it into the same hole because you you've lost the the strength in that hole if you see what i mean i'm going to take a little bit more off and i'm going to do another hole there we go that's better morning geraldine so you can see what they're doing you're, you're keeping it in a line behind your first line of leaf so one two three four and then we're going to do a fifth one towards the bottom and you can do this one sort of pointing out a little bit more at the front if you wish. So, so you've got you've got your line you've got your line going down. Okay. And then basically you do the same with the tulips on the other side. Now these yes, these are obviously a little bit shorter. So uh, you might have to put a little I'm going to do just to extend it I've got a little water vial here these are like what you use at, at Valentine's so you just put a bit of water in it and it and uh, it gives you a little bit more height so I'm going to cut that give it a nice diagonal cut so that's drinking from the water in the water vial oh I just got soaked <laughs> I'm going to turn it a bit so you can see a bit better and I'm going to push that straight into the oasis at the back so that gives me a bit more height because I want it the same height as the rose really. And what you might need to do is cut the leaf off. It depends how, how the leaves look. So right, so can you see what I've done there? So I've used the extra height of the water vial to give me the height at the top with the rose. So this, this one now is more or less the same height, it doesn't have to be exact, but it's more or less the same height as the first rose, okay? Morning Carol, Caroline. Right, so I'm, get, I'm getting rid of sort of the excess leaves. Don't pull them off sometimes because what happens is it's, it breaks the stem. You can pull off the little bits there. So this one's going... Well, what we'll do as well, we'll do it opposite. So this way you went to, with the rose you went to the left with the second one. With the tulips we'll go to the right. right. And what's, ha what's happening with my, um, it's not going to be a problem because um, I'm going to... Uh, the tulips are a lot more not floppy but they they move about a bit i'm just going to use a little a little thin wire just to attach this one gently to the back of the quarter line leaf so it doesn't move about too much and then you can just push it in at the back just to keep it so just keep it where i want it see so now it's not going to move you won't see the um you won't see the 
uh, wire because the, the next tulip is in front of it. See, so can you see what we're doing? So with the roses, I went to the left and with the tulip, I've gone to the right. So the next one, again, get rid of the sort of third leaf. You don't want all these leaves because you want to see the, the linear shape of it. In fact, I'm going to cut them off as well. looks a bit dodgy so I'm going to take that one off. So this time we're going in we're going inwards and again it's going to be roughly the same height as your third and there we go so you can see that's this one is the third one in line with the third rows and just carry on Taking off your excess leaves, I might keep that one on. Enjoy that one, doesn't it? That's not a very good one. Sometimes you have to use a few. That's better. So this one is going level with this one now. So I want it to that up there. And again, we're going on the other side. tulip you can go straight back into the other hole because they're they're very succulent the leaves so there you go so that one's in line with this one and so we've got one more at the front and what you could do you could use a few extra actually with tulips because they're, they're a bit thinner it's not really a problem to use a few more you can use a few more because they're very thin. Right, and obviously what we've got to try and do is hide that um, hide that vial that's, that's in there. So I'm just going to put a little leaf in front of that. Just to hide it. I'm just disguising the vial. So that's kind of your flowers. Okay. So can you see that? So they're all in a line with each other. Morning Jacqueline, morning Eileen. So they're all in a line with each other. You see? So now we're going to put a bit more greenery on the bottom. Also going to do another line just in the middle. I'm going to use my broom just to fill in the back here a little. So I'm putting another line in the middle. You just want something thin and wispy. You don't want anything too too sort of chunky, but you don't want a big hole there either. So I'm just using some broom. There we go. So you're just filling in. You don't want all of this you know empty you want to fill in a little bit so you can put a few little bits at the back this is great for uh, linear arrangements as i said so what you what you want you want to say 75 percent of your flowers upright and 25 percent can be Along, along the bottom so if you want to put some flowers at the bottom you can do it's a bit like when I did the woodland um, arrangement um, you can you know you can make it look sort of like a little woodland area at the bottom if you wish but we're going to put a bit of greenery in first so I'm going to use a few more of my lovely ivy leaves so I'm just going to layer up a little bit more now now you've got your flowers all in proportion Sort of feed them in behind the flowers. You can see that 
So I'm feeding these in just at the back here, so I'm giving them a little bit of overlaying texture. Just giving it a little bit of a backdrop. You don't want to hide the flowers because obviously they're your they're your shape. So you can see can you see that? Just sort of feeding them through the bottom. Right, I'm going to use some of the pittosporum as well, just to give it a bit of depth. This is the one from the garden as well. And give it a little bit of height behind as well if you wish. So once you've got your line of your flowers, you kind of just feed through with your foliages. They're better if they're nice delicate, delicate foliages. I'm going to get rid of this leaf here because it's not looking very pretty. See what I'm doing there. So I'm just putting a few extra pieces in, a few at the side. Not too many, I don't want too many. I might put a few, I've got a few little sprigs of ivy with a few berries on. I might put those at the bottom. Again, because it adds another nice little texture. So these are just literally cut off and put in, the whole sprig goes in together. I think we'll just do two of those. I'll just turn the leaves so that they, so that you can see. I might do one more in the middle actually, I've got another one, I have got three. As you say, you sort of design it as you go along really. Now, there's no hard and fast rules about it. You just do what you feel looks good. Um, to you. You're the designer, you're making it look nice. So go with uh, you know, what feels good. Morning Jacqueline. You like that? Oh, there's lots of lovely hearts. That's really sweet. <laughs> so you can see how it's coming together. Now if you wanted to, like with the Ikebana as well, they just sometimes have a few little delicate flowers. You could put a few little delicate, like, well, I don't really call these delicate, they're croissants, but you could put a few little flowers in at the bottom if you wish, but I'm not, I'm not going to do that because I think it takes away from the, um, from the rustic feel of it and, that, and that's, that's, the light, that's the look I like. Um, I'm going to put a bit more, um, this is beautiful, I mean this is like a flower on its own, morning Matt, this is like a flower on its own, it's just so divine. That brilliant. So we put a few little sprigs of these in. I don't think you need those extra flowers. We're just going to move these in at the edge as well. Now you don't want to move your rows, so hold your rows and put your foliage around the bottom. Suzanne. So. Let's see. And obviously you've got a big uh, batch at the back which we're just going to fill in with some foliage. So you can use your um, your box boxes. This is great for filling in. Just to give it a bit more. You can fill in with whatever you've got really. It doesn't have to be anything expensive. Just fill in with what you've got cheap in your garden if you're lucky enough to have a garden. Um, this year I said I'm going to grow a lot more foliages 
Um, I did put a PDF on the um, in the group as well about about good foliages to grow in your garden if you've got space. If you haven't, you can grow them in pots as well. Morning, Marie. Morning, Eve. Um, but you need you do need lots of foliages. Um, and I know, it's, I know it's a problem with a lot of people getting decent foliages and some florists won't sell it to you, I know. Um, because to them it's a big commodity really, it's, um, you know, they, they work hard to, to get their wholesalers and to get their, to get their good foliages. Um, and they pay good money for them, they're not cheap. Um, it always used to make me laugh when I had shops and people used to say, oh just bung a bit of that foliage in, you know, that stuff over there, that eucalyptus. And you think, mm, well, yes, actually, that's quite expensive, that eucalyptus. Um, but yeah, it always used to make me laugh. So you say, yeah, are you sell? Yeah, okay, I'll bung a bit of that in. <laughs> it just used to make me laugh. The customer's always right, though. Remember, the customer's always right. <laughs> so all I'm doing now is I'm just putting some more foliage at the back, just, just filling in. So I'll show you the back now. It's, it's nothing, uh, it's nothing uh, special. Just use whatever foliage you've got, because you're not going to see the back. The back is just, it does give it a bit more stability though. Um, that's it. And what you can do if you want to, you can add a little bit of uh, jazz if you like. This is aluminium, um, aluminium wire. It comes from Oasis in a, I don't know what you call it, a round reel. Um, and it's, but it's very good and I use it in all sorts of things. And basically, to get this effect, I'm going to put this one in, just to show you. It just gives it another, another dimension. Just put, just put, maybe just put one on each side, just to give it a bit of uh, jazz. See that there? Can't see it, but you can see it, and that's that's the effect you're after. You see? And to get this effect, all you need is a broom handle. You get your broom handle. You leave a bit at the bottom, which is what you're going to put into the oasis. Um, don't know much. It's about, about a meter's worth. Need about a meter. And hold the bottom. So the bottom bit is is your flat bit you're going to put into the, and then you just coil it around your broom handle to get that nice size. This is what you need really. And as you do it, push it down. Keep going until you run out. And you want a nice rounded edge and then just pull it off pull it off the, and you've got your so you can do this with all sorts of things but it has to be a smooth handle or something um, that it will come off of easily um, so that's how you get your little coil and you've got your flat bit on the bottom so then we'll put that one in with our tulips on this side and this will also anchor in that little bit of leaf that didn't didn't go where we wanted it to go kind of twist your and you could if you wanted you can actually twist them around you can twist them around the, the actual thing but I, I quite like them just sort of in an angle like that so that's two of those can you see that and then if you wanted to you could put a few little bits in at the bottom um, we'll, put a, we'll put a few little bits in at the bottom just to give it some depth as well because it's quite sharp. Just got a few little, got a few little coils. There we go. Put one there. And we'll do that one on the other side. Try and keep it straight though, because once it's sort of buckled, it's uh, it's quite hard to. Um, it's not going to matter with this one because it's at the bottom. I think we had about five, six curls. side as well and I think mm, I don't think we do, I don't think we need one in the middle I might do a little bit at the bottom there but this there's all sorts of lovely things you can buy in floristry that will add little, little different little dimensions to your work 
and you just need to just buy them and have a go. Um, I'm going to start sort of probably selling more um, floristry sun sundries soon. I haven't just haven't got around to doing it. I've been so busy doing this group. Um, I haven't really had the chance to put more in my shop, but I don't like that. Because it's sort of lost its shape. There we go, that's better. Now, you can just see a few little holes at the bottom. I'm just going to use a bit more. A bit more of the boxes. So, I'll go through it again. So, um, the, oh, that's not a very nice bit. Take that out. You can see all that horrible yucky bit on there. So, the, the definition of a parallel design basically is 75% of your material upright. Or it can, it can, it doesn't have to be upright, but 75% of it has to be in one direction. It can be to the side, it can be can be like a crescent shape almost but only but most of it has to be in this this part of the design and the rest of it you just fill in at the bottom Suzanne do you have a website for your shop um, I don't actually have a shop as such but I do have a website yeah I can put that on I'll put that in the link um, and I will I am going to be starting to sell more bits and pieces because people keep asking and I but I just haven't really had the chance to do it with this as well so um, I will I will get round to it I promise <laughs> Just like everything else, there's never enough hours in the day, is there? So, um, so that's your parallel arrangement. Um, and as I say, the, it's, it's it's a nice, striking, uniform, graceful effect. You, you get a nice, it's a nice design. You don't have to use a lot of flowers. Um, and as long as you've got some nice, two or three nice foliages, and if you've got a garden, you can get these from your garden. All I can do is encourage you to grow as much foliage as you can. Look at the PDF in the in the file. Um, and you'll see all the ones I, I suggest. These are all in there, the Pittisporum, the Broom, uh, the Boxus, um, the Cordaline, the one that we did at the back to get the, the overall shape. But you can use Cordalines or Yuccas. Um, they're all fantastic flowers to keep um, in your garden. And you just keep cutting them, they just keep growing. Eucalyptus as well is obviously lovely. I, I don't have much luck with Eucalyptus here, but I'm going to try again this year. I'm going to try in a pot um, and try and see if I can um, get it to grow better. Uh, but we, I don't know if we just don't have the temperature here or what, I, I don't know. But anyway, we're going to try again with the eucalyptus. Um, so that's it, ladies and gents. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, so that's a parallel arrangement. All right. So I don't know what we we'll do next week. We'll have a look. Um, I'll have a look at some ideas for next week. Um, and if you've got any ideas, you can let me know as well, obviously. And um, we'll go from there. So have a great week, everybody. Continue to invite your friends and family and neighbours, everybody you know that might like to watch this free. I do it free every week. I, there's no cost to anybody. Um, it's just a free demonstration. Um, and I'd love to have lots more followers as well. So I'll put these on the YouTube video, YouTube channel as well. So um, I'll put the links all in the, um, the group for you. Um, so you can look at those and you can check them on uh, the YouTube video anytime. They're all there um, and I'll put this one on with last week. I don't think I did last week's either. So I will put last week's on as well. But that's it. It's a, it's a stunning arrangement. And, you know, just have a go. Use different techniques. Use different aluminium wires and things. And, you know, you can create something really special and people will be just so thankful for you doing it for them. Um, thank you, Kathleen. Thank you, Wendy. Um, I'm glad you appreciate it. I'm glad you appreciate it. Just invite more people. We'd love, we'd love to see more people here on the live as well. It's only got sort of 25 this morning, so we'd love to see a few more people live. I know Sunday mornings isn't always a good time, but um, there's never really a good time, is there? But maybe we do some in the evening. I won't have to worry about the lights so much then in the garage. <laughs> it's just the sun, the blaring sun coming through here. So, but anyway, have a good day, everyone, and have a lovely Sunday, and I'll see you next week. Thanks.